Hello everyone, welcome back to Susie Saves. I'm Susie and it is time for our weekly budget. Happy Friday everyone, I hope you're having an amazing Friday morning. And let's jump right into it, shall we? So, it is November 8th. Friday, that is my payday. Technically it is Thursday nights, but <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Can you believe it? I worked a full week last week. Nine to five. Work. And they paid me a full paycheck, which was very nice. I've not gotten a full paycheck in a little while. $760 is my full weekly paycheck. I do get paid every week, which I like. I know some people stress out about it because it's a lot of budgeting, but I love getting paid weekly. <laughs> okay. Let's jump into our expenses. So we have rent and internet. These are both non-variable expenses. They are the same always. The internet is 91, it's like $90 and 40 cents or something. Uh, so we put $93 in every, or $23, pardon me, in every week. And then at the end of the month, we will have $92 to cover that. <laughs> Rent is $800 a week. Four weeks in a month means $200 a week towards rent. However, um, this is a magic month where we have an extra week. So I'm going to use that week to help pay rent and not this week. Um, because I have other places, unfortunately, my money needs to go. So we cannot input towards rent this week. Next are our variable expenses. These are expenses that we put money towards, but they're kind of always fluctuating. For example, gas. Gas price is not consistent <laughs> at all. Um, but I do know that regardless of if gas prices stay around the three to four dollar mark, that's where they are where I live. We're lucky if it drops under three dollars. Um, I can fill my tank with fifty dollars because I just have a little beater car, so. I do not plan to use that full $50, but it could go up to $50, so that's why I am budgeting that. Next is going to be groceries. Groceries prices change, but also what you need to buy changes. So for example, if you're a smaller family, maybe you don't need to buy milk every week. Maybe it takes you a longer time to go through milk, but some weeks you have to buy it and stuff like that. I always make my grocery lists on the app before we leave the house. This helps us not do impulse spending where we're just walking down an aisle and grabbing things and putting it in the cart. And it also helps because there's an online calculator in there and it will calculate your total as you add things to the cart or to the list online. And it also helps you um, recognize when things are on sale and coupons for certain items. So we always sit down at the kitchen table we say, what do we need for this week? We write it all down. And if it's over budget, we take some items off. Um, I know recently we had to skip, I think we were out of soy sauce or something or ketchup. <laughs> and we were like, well, we'll go another week without ketchup. It's really not the big deal. Uh, so things like that can really help. We are just the two of us, just me and my husband. I budget $60 a week for groceries. This does not count paper products, um, but it does count other supplies, if that makes sense. So toilet paper and paper towels are expensive, um, especially when you, cause you have to buy them like in bulk. I don't buy one paper towel roll at a time. You can do that at certain stores, but I tend to buy a six pack. And so that will be over $10. And so I don't want $10 away from what could have been food to go towards paper towels um, because that's not a healthy trade <laughs> uh, and food's very important. So I have a separate sinking fund where I put rollover money from groceries to go specifically towards paper goods like that, like paper towels and toilet paper. However, uh, because we don't need shampoo and soap very often, because just the two of us, we just don't run out that often, that does come out of the budget because it's only 
maybe once a month, maybe once every two months that we have to go and repurchase those things. I'm rambling. Okay. <laughs> Next we have miscellaneous. I tried many times because I was like, what even is a miscellaneous category? I don't like having it. I want to have specific categories and know what I'm going to buy. Um, but stuff pops up. And so I was continuously overspending on my weekly budgets because I wasn't willing to put in a miscellaneous category. Now I do, and I really go over my budget. Um, miscellaneous can be different things to different people. Sometimes I use miscellaneous uh, if we want to go out to dinner, we can use that money. Or um, say, oh my gosh, I forgot it was so-and-so's birthday, I want to buy them a card, but I didn't budget for that. Now you have a place of, oh no, I do have some money in here that can go towards that, right? So it's kind of just for things that sneak up on you. Or like, let's be honest, if you're having a bad day and you want to buy lunch at work or you X, Y, Z, having a little bit of money set aside to be like, hey, it's okay. You're not going to blow your budget if you do this. It just relieves a lot of stress. Um, so I definitely have this. We don't always use this. Most of the time we use this, it's for eating out. But we don't always use it, so it will just get recycled into something else at the end of the week if it needs to be. This is the part where I tell you that um, I have a big bill. I have a big medical bill due this week. Um, it's from the dermatologist. Dermatologist? <laughs> and it is a whopping... $233, which is not as bad as I expected it to be, um, but it was more than I expected it to be. And that is because they found uh, an atypical mole on my body, and so I got biopsied um, just to make sure it was not cancerous. I got that call today. It is not cancerous, um, but it was atypical, and there were mutations in the cells around there. Which basically means, unfortunately, I need to return to the dermatologist every 12 months on the dot to make sure that uh, I don't have any cancer growing in my body. Um, I had gone to the dermatologist before. Like, I don't think a lot of people just go to the dermatologist. Uh, I have more than the average amount of moles. Uh, and though you only see my hands, you can see I have a lot of moles on my body. Um, and so I knew I'm fair skinned. You cannot see me, but I am a uh, blonde and I have blue eyes. So those are extra factors that can add to a person's likeliness of getting skin cancer. I do not smoke. I don't go to tanning beds. I just have bad genes. <laughs> um, and so they were like, unfortunately, you were already at a higher risk for cancer. And now that we found atypical cells, you're at a higher risk of, hey, we already know stuff has gone awry before. So it's not out of the picture that it would happen again. But it's not cancer. I don't have cancer. And that is a super good thing because I was worried this morning that I was going to get a phone call that told me I had cancer. And it did not. Um... Though there's never been a better time in history to get cancer. Because we are always evolving. Okay, anyway, that was a tangent. So I have been told that I need to return to the dermatologist every year for a yearly checkup for the foreseeable future. <laughs> um, but better to know than not know. Okay, so that's a big fat bill uh, that I gotta pay. And I'll probably pay it just today and get it out. Uh, we will not see the cash stuffing of that because all of that paperwork is handled online. So it will just be transferred in between my bank account and theirs. <laughs> For savings, we have the Roth IRA. And then we have a buffer. This buffer is my checking account. So for instance, when I have to pay bills online, I don't want to have only this amount of money in my bank account because if there's associated credit card fees or something else, mine's a debit card, but you know what I mean, then it could pull out to 
35 and it would send me under. So I have a buffer that I always account for to just have a little bit of space in the checking account if anything goes awry, if there's a yearly resubscription I have forgotten about that suddenly gets pulled out, it won't send me under. For the sinking funds, we have my husband's car maintenance, my car maintenance, we have pets, gifts, this is more specifically Christmas now that we're getting closer, phone bill, which is caught up, which is super exciting, um, car insurance, and I'm starting a new one for medicine, so I can uh, not have to pay a big hefty bill like I did last week, and that we can slowly save up some money. So, for my Roth IRA, I put in $135 a week. This will hopefully bring me up to the seven grand I can pay per year. My husband's car maintenance gets $5. My car maintenance gets $5. The pets are getting $10. What does that say? Gifts is getting 15. Wow, that's a lot of money going towards gifts. Because uh, we only got a few weeks left, and then you gotta start ordering. The phone bill is getting its regular amount. It is fully caught up now, so it's getting $13. Medicine is getting $10. And then car insurance is the next one that we have to fully restuff after the big debacle. So it is getting a large sum of money this week. It is getting a hundred and seventy dollars which should mean that by next week it can be full again and we can work on saving again and and all that stuff rather than uh trying to continually refill this debt i have none i am very very thankful that uh i never got myself into any debt um i rent so i don't have a mortgage or anything like that I own my car, so I don't have um, car insurance. Like I said, it's a or car insurance. I don't have a car loan um, because it is a beater, like I said. Okay, that looks good. Um, so let's go ahead and fill it out. And I will talk a little bit about some exciting news, which is that my husband has graduated from college with his bachelor's degree, which means he is now looking for a job, which is super exciting because we will have dual income at that time. And he already has an interview scheduled for next week, next Thursday. Which is super exciting and also super scary. <laughs> I don't know if scary is the right word, but it's, it is the first like big boy professional job. And um, those interviews can be really scary, especially when you're in a position where you really want the job. Um, that makes it even more scary. <laughs> If he gets uh, the job that he thinks he will get, he will make more money than me. So our um, our income will not only double, it will more than double, which is crazy to think about. Uh, absolutely wild, but I'm super excited. And even if he doesn't get it, like we have been living off only my income for over a year now. And so it's it's we'll just keep doing what we've already been doing you know it's not really that scary because we don't we don't have debt so we don't have to worry about bills coming due that we can't pay and all this stuff as long as we continue to do what we need to do don't get me wrong but we had 136 left 135 went into the rough so our buffer is only one dollar this week i don't like a buffer every week more than five dollars um I like to, if it's more than $5, I'll put $5 into one of these funds because I don't want the buffer to get too big and then have to worry about pulling it out and, and making sure the money is the right amount and all that stuff. So I like to keep the buffer fairly low. But that's what's been going on. <laughs> um, we are still planning our wedding and um, 
the next thing we will have to buy is we are going out and tasting cake pops because we're not doing a cake we're doing cake pops so we have to go talk to the baker and do um, tastings for the different cake bases to see what we like i don't know if that will be complimentary since we're ordering so many cake pops later on or if that is a totally separate fee i'm going to assume that it's separate fee so that i have the money in case i need it but that's not happening until january um the only other thing is invites we will have to pay for printing of the invitations and sending them i don't know exactly how expensive that postage <laughs> might be but i'm guessing it's gonna be like a hundred dollars just to mail them it probably won't be that much it'll probably be half that but anywhere from like 50 to 100 dollars just to mail them and then we have to buy the envelopes and the actual invitations which have to get like printed from a person anyway i'm looking forward to may where i can show you the budget breakdown of my wedding <laughs> okay i've talked too much okay thank you all so much for being here on this friday chatty morning I hope you're having a fantastic Friday, last day of the work week if you work a normal work schedule, and I hope you have a great rest of your day and a fantastic, safe weekend. Thank you all so much for being here, and I'll see you next time. Have a good night, everyone!